I beat him. <laughs> and then over time, I realized that I was actually recovering from something, mm. but I, I didn't, it didn't hit me until I was halfway there. So the mental health benefits started to kick in at that point. Like, uh, I'm a person that practice something that's called semen retention. Some it's people. kind of extreme in my opinion. I know gorgeous women that have like body dysmorphia is what you call it. Oh. That to have you got to yourself in a good mental space where you're, you're confident and you look like you, you want to look. I must Listen to the tone of my voice. Can you imagine me walking up to a male trainer and say, hey, like, I need that barbell when you finish. <laughs> you have to be a little bit more assertive to let them know that, hey, I'm here to take, a, take up as much space as you are taking up. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Faded Conversation. We're talking about health, wellness, fitness, taking care of your body and your mind as well. We know both things are very, very important, but we invited two great people to be on board today to have some conversations about the difference between how men and women stay fit, how the dynamics are different for men and women as well. And we loved all the perspectives. We got some very, very good insight into it. So let's check it out. Both of you have, have different fitness journeys and we know that it's very different for men and women in the term of being fit and staying fit and what it takes from society's perspective and personal perspectives in order to maintain that health and wellness type of lifestyle. Um, so, Jigga, welcome back by the way, you've been on the show before. Yeah. Um, we're gonna, I'm, I'm sure life is very, very different now, now that the pandemic is over for sure. and must be, must be very busy. And yeah, for sure. I know you balance a nine to five along with being a certified trainer. You have clients, you have so much going on as well. So I'm very, very sure that you guys have very different perspectives, but then still probably a common goal of just wanting to maintain fitness and staying fit. So Sean, I'll start with you first. Um, tell me now, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a mom, okay, firstly. Great. On, on top of everything, I okay, great. work full time and I'm a personal trainer as okay. well as you as you mentioned. So I'm always juggling a lot of things good, good. at once. Mm -hmm. And fitness is definitely my passion. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's always been a rewarding field mm -hmm. for me. Okay, and so I'm glad to be here to talk more about that. Okay, great. And Jiga, uh, how long have you been a DJ formally? And then how long have you been in the gym? Well, uh, DJ long time. <laughs> well, long, I know you as a DJ long, long, long time. Um, all my life, to be honest. Okay. And um, fitness took it serious during the pandemic, but um, before on and off from 2016. Okay. And what made you take it seriously? What started the fitness journey? We usually all have that, that one thing or that occurrence or that time that happened where you're like, no, I need to take it into my own hands now and start taking it seriously. Um, during during the COVID, um, it was my release. Okay. Um, it was that you know space where um, my workout and when I think about not playing, not working, and then it become it became a form of um, meditation for me. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Sean, what made you start? And when did you start? Um, my fitness journey started back in. 2018, okay. my son was, I think he was approaching like four years old at the time and I was at home and somebody showed me a picture that they took of me okay. and I didn't like the way I looked, looked in the picture, in the photo. Okay. It was, I sat and I looked at it for a long while and I'm like, hmm, I have to do something about this and so I joined the gym, started to work out. In the beginning, I really didn't know what I was doing. I think 
everybody kind of starts off yeah, on the path but, that everybody kind of go through that little point right but after a while um i had to accept the fact that i needed help in order to get cool. to where to achieve whatever goal i wanted at the time which was purely to look good at <laughs> that time so i sought the help of a personal trainer mm -hmm. and um i've been in the gym ever since Okay. okay. Um, you mentioned that, and, and I think that that's something that probably happens to a lot of people. Like they get shown a picture, and they're like that's me, that's really me. That's that's how I look every day walking around, and I couldn't tell me this. <laughs> like, and, and like once you realize that you, because it's intrinsic motivation, especially if you're going to the gym in the morning to get up out of your very very comfortable bed. Yo, it's a different. Yo, I tired of seeing those reviews on Instagram of it. You can't much stay motivated, stay focused, stay disciplined, or something mm -hmm. to that effect. And it's a realist thing because the roll out of your bed and do that early in the morning it takes a lot. It and you does. have to really be disciplined in order to do that. So, yeah. Um, Jigo, you had mentioned that you started your fitness journey more in COVID, but to be very honest, I remember, I mean, wow, this was like probably 10, 12 years ago, I don't remember. Um, when you want Heineken Green Synergy, you had on more weight at that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like, what, how did you lose weight in, in, to start? Like, I know she started gym in 2018. Yeah. Um, before you... um, I tried, um, you know, dieting, mm -hmm. lost about 25 pounds. 25. And then, um, yeah, that I did um, for 21 days. No, no sugar, no carb, no, no just um, lettuce and protein every day and drink green tea. Oh. I lose 15 pounds in 21 days. Wow. Then um, <laughs> three, three months, I lose 25. But then, you know, it stopped. Yeah, you get a plateau, so then, yeah. plateau right? So yeah. Plateau, right? Yeah. So, so then start workout. You know, and then I have a, a trainer also. Okay. Do that for three months. You know, boy, I get abs and things. Boy, <laughs> boy shirt, them dash ready, ready. Sure. Ready. No shirt. Sure. New wardrobe, boy, everything. Yeah. <laughs> so um, then um, after that, you no, know, um, you know, you notice you want to look a certain way, but then yeah. color bone and look too slim. Never like how I'm looking a certain clothes. And, okay. You know, so I'm always in and out, in and out. Okay. Okay. But you know, as I said, during COVID, it was my release and then it's what it is. I, yeah, man, I, I, I can identify with that COVID thing because I, I, I started in the gym for a reason that most people, that it was purely health based because I think, because you know, key part is for yeah. like over 10, 15 years now. Yeah. After one part that I kept in Christmas, I got sick. I went to the doctor and the doctor says to me that it's that my blood pressure. And it's like, so how many kids you have? At the time I had no children yeah. and I was like 20, four at the time and I was like I don't have any kids I said, well your blood pressure is of one of somebody that is extremely stressed and has kids at your age and I'm like okay um could you have to do something about this and I was like yeah well, we can put you on medication or you can start to work out and I'm like my high blood pressure runs in my family and I know that those medications are I don't want to say addictive but you you can't come off once you start basically you're right very there's a dependency on that so started in the gym blood pressure started to come down and I said all right cool you know you, you like how you fit better yeah, the yeah, certain things yeah. as well so you say all right cool you kind of start to make it a lifestyle but for me it was purely just you know I don't want to go on high blood pressure medication yeah. so I need to take this more seriously yeah. and then like I said the, the rest is history yeah. but you said when you started it was mostly about you know you're going and you look fit so yes yeah. it was <laughs> purely the physical I was I've always been on the smaller side mm -hmm. but at that point i did have a high percentage of body fat you know at first glance i probably wouldn't look like i belong in the gym mm -hmm. okay. or you, you need to, to go feel like yeah. you know if you're going to the gym you must be trying to lose weight but yeah. no so at the time i just wasn't comfortable with the appearance and so i put effort into that um and then over time, I realized that I was actually recovering from something, mm. but I, I didn't, it didn't hit me until I was halfway there. Uh, so okay. the mental health benefits mm. started to kick in at that point. Like it started to look good, you start to see it better, start to have a little bit more confidence, and then you reflect, I started to reflect on, you know, certain behavioral trends at the time that I was in that space right. and that is when I realized that this is something that I definitely have to keep going just to 
I'm sure that I can be there for my son and be there for my family. It's really just a, a lifetime thing mm -hmm. from there on. Once it hit me, that was it. That was it. I mean, yeah. Like I said, sometimes that's what gets you out of the bed about it in the morning because, or whenever it is that you do decide to work out or makes you do it even though you've had a rough day or yeah. you had a long week and you're like, don't miss a Monday type of thing. It's, the, it's that mental health benefit that goes along with it because for me, I mean, I know that a lot of my best business ideas, a lot of how I attack my day comes from the time that I spend in the gym in the morning. I don't really talk to much people at the gym, I zone in and I just have the time to just think and clear my head and just Meditate, determine how I'm yeah. going to make certain things work at that time. So I, so now that we, we know he's a DJ, um, what do you do outside of you know, going to the gym and being a personal trainer? I work in quality and production at Vista Brings. Okay. Um, so it's kind of a sedentary kind of job. Mm -hmm. You sit around the desk and you work for the full eight hours. Um, so for people who live that kind of lifestyle, it's a little bit more challenging to get in, you know, to be a little bit more active. active. Okay. I have to get creative with people who live that kind of life. Mm -hmm. like. If I have a client who sits at a desk for eight hours, mm -hmm. I tell them, hey, go into the supermarket, park at the bus a lot, walk to the supermarket, okay. take the stairs instead of taking the elevator, okay. you know, things like that. So with doing, with working full time mm -hmm. and being a personal trainer, it helps me to become just a little bit more creative mm -hmm. in that sense so I can help others achieve. You know, whatever goal I have. Because I have to do it myself. Too. Right, because it's relatable yeah. to you at the time. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. That's good. That's good. Because a lot of people tend to look at their, their trainers as, you know, superhuman people that, you know, they've never missed a meal or they, mm -hmm. they, they only eat that one grain of rice that they're told mm -hmm. to eat type of vibe. And trainers are people too. I'm sure trainers Regular go out and they have too. friends and they, 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 they must at some point in time, you know, slip up or have a little cheat here or there. Mm -hmm. But then, you guys, it's kind of like, you know, teachers like when we were in school, like, you know, you know, used to see in a teacher in a certain setting, but I, I have to look at the camera, wherever the camera is, and tell you that your trainers are regular people too. Regular but people it, too. It must be hard to balance, you know, you keeping up with this lifestyle and then keeping up with everybody else's thing that you're telling yes. you to do as well. Yes, it, it is a challenge. There's rarely any room for error. <laughs> <laughs> Juggling a nine to five, and personal training. Mm -hmm. I have to plan down to the T. And I think one of the more challenging aspects of it is the emotional aspect. Because can you imagine you have like a rough day at work yeah. and I have to go to the gym mm. to ensure that my clients do what need right. to be done. I have to ensure that there's like a boundary between the two because you don't want a bad energy. No, you, you have to compartmentalize right? everything yeah. and that, that must be difficult in and of itself. Can you imagine like you, you you wake up and you say to yourself, I don't want to go to the gym today, but I'm going to go and mm. you come in all slow, can you see me and I'm slow to go. Yeah. So you can't afford that for that to You send them to a workout and you just on the bench on your phone cussing people like I can't no, bother with all of this now. It's very important for me to, you know, stay focused and always have a plan whenever I step into the gym with with my clients because it's an investment mm -hmm. and nobody shows up just to waste that. Yeah, that's so. true. I mean, they, they already showed up, so that should have been enough, like, ah, to be honest, because exactly. just showing up is hard. Exactly. Um, what made you want to get certified, though? Like, it's one thing to be fit and, you mm -hmm. know, you have everything in control, you have, you have the mental side of it, but what made you want to take it to that extra step of getting certified? I feel like accreditation is definitely important, mm -hmm. especially where respect is concerned. Agreed, agreed. Um, and in this particular space, there is new information every single day. Good. There's, there are new studies every single day. You don't know everything. Mm -hmm. You will never know any, That's everything true. That's in true. this particular space. And so going into the gym is not so much about, all right, I'm your trainer. I'm going to make sure that you work out and you're tired, so tired when you leave, you can't walk. It's so much more than that. There's a nutritional aspect to it. There is a mental aspect to it. There's even um, rehab for for injuries. It's, mm. it's really a yeah, that's wide, so yeah. wide, 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 wide spectrum. And so it was important for me to let people know that I know what I'm doing. Right. It's fine for you to look at me and say, "All right, she looks good. Let me see if I can do what she does." Mm. It, it doesn't have to work for you. It probably won't work for you. Mm -hmm. There's different approaches for different clients. Like for example, I have 
um, a client who started with me and within two months she lost a good amount of weight but by the time we reached month three i was like all right something is wrong like we're at here we need to be here and something is wrong and so i decided to do some research and that is when i found out that her blood type actually has has a lot to do with how she loses Way. Okay. And so even though that information was there when I was doing my certification course, it wasn't very in-depth. But when I went and did the research, I realized, oh, they said something about this. Okay. Very good. But I had to dig deeper mm -hmm. in order to help her like come out of that world. Mm -hmm. So the accreditation aspect of it is like kind of a tip of the, the iceberg. Mm -hmm. It basically warms you mm -hmm. and opens your mind to the other information that you need to seek out. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that I got that done. Okay, that's good, that's good. A lot of people picture, you know, just based on, you know, how they look like. If, oh. if you look a certain way and I want to look like that, then you should be Tell able to show me, me. Especially the male. Because ah. you guys go in the gym and you see a guy with big muscles and you're like, that's the person I need to work out with. <laughs> but what they do, won't necessarily work, work for you. you. Yeah, that's true, that's true, that's but, true. Right? But then, it come back, you don't want no big belly man a trainer. <laughs> that's <laughs> true. Yeah, but yeah, I know. This true, man true, don't know what I'm But then, true. but then, <laughs> I was about to ah, say, I'm exactly, um, Steve Francis, Steve exactly. Francis, straight in bold, and Steve it's Francis is, important. you know, well you made. Like, yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. a, a big part of it is enjoying the process too. Like, you know, a lot of people will tell you that sometimes you know, they can't maintain a certain way, but I know people like yourself that you're trying to do that yeah. now. Like, they enjoy getting bigger yeah. or getting smaller yeah. and then coming back and putting yeah. on the way because they feel like they have the power to transform their body right. and determine yeah. what they yeah. look like. For and sure. that, that, that definitely helps in our mental health space too. Yeah. A lot of people will take some people, and I know, I know, gorgeous women that have like body dysmorphia, is what you call it. Oh, right, that's another topic. For <laughs> Trust. Wow. wow. Trust. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can't imagine what that is like, to be very honest. But I know that must be a very different struggle to like look in the mirror and not see what everybody else sees and all those kind of things. Absolutely. So to have Absolutely. that, to have you got to yourself in a, a good mental space where you're, you're confident and you look like you, you want to look. I'm assuming it must be a, a very powerful thing. I have, I, I have mixed, 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 um, mixed views on that, you know. Body is smart. Yeah, because, mm. you know, all right. You know, with, with, for me, for me, confidence is key. So it's like, as much as I am into, you know, training, um, I like a thick woman. I like a, you know, I'm not saying yo, you're gonna be big and fat and have big belly, mm -hmm. but I like a thick woman over mm -hmm. a slim girl. Okay. And it's not like I have any, I'm not saying yo, you know. No, no, your good. preference is your preference yeah. it's completely. You know what I mean? So, a lot of the time, people speaking confidence into people is very hard, mm -hmm. you know? Because sometimes, as I say, you know, them, them not believing in themselves, mm -hmm. but we feel like it. All of them things they come back down from childhood days. You know, yeah. them never have nobody to motivate them or, you know, maybe them parents used to tell them certain things or mm -hmm. school picnic used to gimmicks them and say, go away, go away. Mm -hmm. you know, so it come back down to a lot of them things yeah, sure. what that them hold on to, what them need to release and let go. Mm -hmm. So that's why for me, I always say, yo, it, you know, me not, it always like that for me. Okay. I feel like it's deeper than just, you One know, day. just trauma them all on to an all as well. I mean, that, yeah. that's a very, very good point. And you guys know that we, we're big on mental health on this show and that has to, that has to be like an underlying factor at all times. Like yeah. Not only is it you know strong for you to you know get up out of bed and keep going, but then if you are seeing results, like accept that. Like a lot of people don't want to accept that they are actually mind, making progress. The mind plays a lot of tricks mm -hmm. on you. And so you have to be very much like rooted into who you are trying to become as a, a person. It's a struggle, body dysmorphia is a struggle for a lot of people, especially people on the smaller side who are trying to gain yeah. muscle. Yeah. They probably don't get to put in five days this week and they feel like, all right, then I'm going to lose everything. Right, it doesn't right. work like that. Yeah. So also you have to stop putting yourself on these deadlines mm -hmm. 
oh i need to be need to have this much muscle at this point i need to lose this weight by this point you put on 20 pounds it didn't take you two months it probably accumulated over a time or you lost some weight probably over a month that you you know lost the weight so you know don't be so hard on yourself do what you can do do what's in your power and continue to work on yourself like that's my like biggest advice for people who are struggling i'm a blame i blame i blame social media for so a lot of that <laughs> because we compare Broad each topic. other they come you know compare like yo oh him look like that and him no go to the gym like me or yeah. you know they compare i'm gonna feel like a lot that and we're going to get a lot more of that mm, you know the next true. five years everybody's ten being years, influenced by something else other than yourself mm. you, as you say you know you just have to know who you are and true. once you know That's who true. you are you know where you want to go I mean, until you know who you are you will never know where you're going mm. True. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's a big part of the reason why I asked the question as to why you want to get to originally because a lot of people, I don't know if you see this as a trainer, a lot of people have a screenshot in them phone or something like that they can be like, I want to look like this person. And it's yeah. usually somebody from social media. Yeah. And, and you like don't even know what they're doing, you know? Exactly. Especially the celebrities, you know? No, you they have, have no access clue. to insane things mm. that you wouldn't even think about. Steroids. And that's what you want to compare yourself Self to. Self-toy. Like, you just getting up every day, going to your nine to five, working, having kids and all that, you know, they're juggling a million of other things that you're trying to compare yes. yourself to somebody. With a private chef and a private gym and yeah, a personal man. trainer, 365, yeah, and a doctor. Yeah. And yeah, man, them did way yeah. this took a piece of corn before they put it in the meal and mm. all that. Yeah, I'm not on. doing that. <laughs> me not we no food because I eat. <laughs> not tell me we are not eat. Oh, count your macros. Nope. <laughs> Hear me now. Give me my food. Trip, trip, trip. Yes. Easy, oh, easy for you. Laser. Easy. I'm happy laser. for you. I'm very happy for you. <laughs> Yo, I know, I know people that do like the complete opposite. Like the funny thing about it is, like I'm especially carnival related people having been a part of carnival and had something to do with it. Yeah. You know, I've seen some people go through some things to fit into a carnival costume and then you have the complete opposite of that where you have, you know, there are some absolutely gorgeous women who just are, just look amazing. They don't have to do anything. They get them, they go to work, they eat and they eat absolute foolishness and the body's great. <laughs> so then, then that- They're fortunate. They're yeah. very fortunate. And then that, that at some point in time is going to make these people feel like, yo, what is this person doing? I bet this person's doing this they never really ask because okay. you know we we as jamaicans we're proud people when our girls come out they're gonna say oh, so what are you doing yeah. like mm -hmm. what are you doing and then some people also there's a lot of people that are that don't eat like i, I just i found out that there's a lot of people that do that what do you call that it's intermittent fasting, fasting. right so like some people does not gonna take on that like me i i can't miss a meal sorry like mm -hmm. <laughs> no, i would never you know encourage anybody to go to any extreme like i feel like those things are very extreme and they're very short-lived yeah, as well. yeah that's true the because results. how long can you fast for we're human beings we enjoy food we enjoy alcohol <laughs> <laughs> we enjoy living our lives and you have to fit in fitness mm. into, your into your life you like it shouldn't be the other way forever. around right so you exactly. can't fast forever you fast and you reach the goal one month after you gain back all the weight. Yeah, what yeah, are you yeah. going to do now? You didn't learn anything during the time you were fasting. You learned about fasting. No, you were just hungry. You were just hungry for maneuver three Maneuver your life <laughs> after you finish the fasting. You yeah, understand? Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is why I like the fact that you don't attach it to a goal or a deadline because when you get to that deadline, you're like, oh, okay, what I made I it into now? this. I fit mm -hmm. into that. And then in another few weeks, you're like, okay, I'm putting back on the weight, but I don't really know what to do mm -hmm. now apart from, you know, yeah, yeah. Right. eating. So. I did it. I did it. Um, I did an intermittent fasting you know? yeah. during during COVID. Mm. Yeah, because um, at the time, I never want to get big and fat. <laughs> Yo, I'm scared of putting on a it's whole really. lot of weight. Because yeah. remember, everywhere went closed whenever they got gym. Yeah, no, no that's true. And, yo, yo I do intermittent fasting like, yo, like for real, real. No, like, like, yo, yo, so when gyms were closed, I, I even think I was talking to you about this at some point in time, yo. Stress My yo, know, I was longing yeah. to go back to gym. I bought yeah. weights, I bought little things and everything. But yo, know, every morning, six o'clock, 
without the exercise mat and turn I had the, the night training up yeah. was free for like a while. Yeah, yeah. Yo, I stick to that, you know, because I realized you know, the, the alternative to this is just putting yeah. on weight with nothing yeah. to do about it. Like no, it you couldn't exactly. go out, you couldn't do anything. Nothing, like that, so. not, not at all. So. You see how we're on opposite, um, you know, spectrums because while I was home during COVID, I was so small. Like I lost <laughs> everything you and I lost it in. so fast. Yeah, my lose because you, you strength train with weights, right, so yeah, you couldn't right. get the weights. So the most I could do at the time was to just. Work on do this with some push ups, uh, work yeah, on yeah. my body weight strength, but right. it's not going to do a lot for me, like right. physically, right. Right. with the physical appearance is concerned. Mm. So, yeah. everybody has their own struggle. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, as a big part of it as well, knowing the right thing to do and like executing people and instructing people as to what yeah. to do is. I would say just as important, even not more important, and probably looking the way that you look sometimes Absolutely. because you know, you need... I wouldn't even say that I'm super ripped right now. Mm. Like my current physique mm. is not the best physique, physique that I have had. But when I instruct and when I teach, mm -hmm. it's going to be clear it's that going... I know exactly what I'm doing. What I'm doing. Uh, what was your first trainer like? I'll take, I'll take it from you. Yeah. Um, it was Kurt. You must know. Yeah, 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 I do know. Yeah. Okay. Yo, listen. <laughs> that man, yo, meaning like, what what I can tell you about a trainer is this. Um, a trainer push you. Mm -hmm. Like, even like, all right, you do five, and I know you can do two more. That's so true. So I would tell anybody, like, you're just starting out to get a trainer. Mm -hmm. And then you learn the form, the right form, yeah, man. what form to do. Important. All right, you have your meal plan, whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, my first trainer it was it was it was good. Okay. You know, it you know, set up that set that bar very yeah. high from the one because I mean, let's let's face it guys, they they we all have that when you have like you have, you're doing a set at ten and you at seven and you know you can stop and nobody's gonna be like, yeah. oh so yeah, yeah cool, I'm gonna stop. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But that additional push is really where the greatness kinda yes, comes in. That's so what, it is, you know? what was your first trainer like? Um my first trainer was Max. Shout out to Max. <laughs> um, it was very different mm. from what I used to do when I was just doing my little thing or whatever. It was mm. very serious, mm -hmm. serious work. Mm. What is important when it comes to personal training is having a plan. Okay. So your personal trainer has to have a plan for you. Merv always have a plan. I have an excuse, Merv has a plan. When I come in, I'm feeling tired, I'm having a headache, I want to go home. I have a plan. Come. Don't worry about it. Right? That. You might not be able to go as hard as you normally do, but you'll be able to get something done. That's and so, um, the accountability is very important. Is there when you have a personal. So Max always had my back. He introduced me to strength training, which at the time, I didn't know I needed to be lifting so heavy in order to gain muscle mass. I thought I needed to be doing some little squats, some little, mm -hmm. you know, nothing too serious. And so I really learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. And after a while working with him, he said to me, you know that you could do this? Like I see where you have the potential to be a great trainer because at the time I started to learn things and I could correct him. Nice, nice. Right? If him slip up or not, I'm saying, mm, that makes sense. Let's let's revisit that. Mm -hmm. And so he always like motivated me to start, you know, personal training. Okay. Yeah. Jigga, the yeah. it must be extremely difficult for somebody to have a, a job or a career like yours in yeah. being a DJ, work late nights to early mornings and yeah. still maintain a good physique because the things that the people eat at 2 a.m. when they're coming back home is not what Fast. is in health digest Fast. at all. Fast. And you know, there's only so much bread and pan chicken that can <laughs> that can affect you. Egg sandwich. Egg sandwich is key. You can't understand the egg sandwich, yeah. not, not even for a minute. Yeah. But tell us how you juggle that or how you balance what you do versus maintain eating healthy and then going to the gym. How does that work? So, um, you know, it's mostly on weekends. Okay. So, um, because we play mostly on weekends, during the week, we just hit it full on. We try to do four days. Oh, okay. So. You know, and four or five days. Okay. Um, on an off, if I feel like, yo, all right, my shirt, I go, come off. <laughs> you know, we go, all right, cool, mm -hmm. here we go. Um, we do six days. Nice. But, um, nice, nice, nice. you know, I'm in the gym for 
two and a half hours. Serious? Yeah. No, my yo, wow. Because, because man, the strength training, so. <laughs> nice, nice. You know, nice. The, the rest period longer. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Because, yeah. yo, I, I do probably like an hour, hour and a half max, and then boom, gone about my day. Mm-hmm. Yo, that's. Two and a half hours, hour, three hours hour. sometimes. Yo, what else? You live there. You're like, your yeah, male go there yeah, and them yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's Crazy. serious. Because, um, you know, the, 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 the good thing about that is, man, you're not know, bridging mm. and we'll work out together with, yeah, four, three hours. Really. Okay. Well, yeah, the accountability, like you had said before, like that's a lot of people hesitate about getting the trainers. Like, okay, cool, I already paid for the gym. Do I really need to pay for a trainer? You know, get a friend, get, get somebody who's see, get somebody who's more serious than you. Yeah. That's probably a very, very important thing because that I know that you know, when you don't want to get up, you're looking for that text message like, mm, they're not coming. No, you want to be sure that it's somebody that's going to go. That that is a big big part of it too because yeah. you're not gonna feel motivated every day, All but time, right? you have to try yeah. and find a way to stay consistent. Yeah, yeah. yeah man. If, if you, it, it takes dedication at first, you know? mm. but then the consistency push you push you through. You know, cool. and you know what you want. From you know what you want, you know, you're like yo, you're just all right, yo, I'm gonna say this more. But a lot of the time, people, you know, they want the sexy body. Mm. Then after they get it, them like them stop, yeah. and then that mess you up because mm. then. You go back, then yeah. you have to do it, do it over, over again. every time. No, man, that's so. a good point because a lot of people do it for a specific thing, like I'm going to this event in another yeah. two months and I need yeah. to fit into this dress or yeah. I need to look this way, I need yeah. to take like, off my shirt. <laughs> I always encourage people to take this approach. If you're hesitant to get a personal trainer, that's fine. Mm. But fitness, it doesn't cost you. Mm. Fitness is free. Squatting well, in though. your house is free. That's true. Though. Walking up a hill is free. Big up there to the night certain... training up. It got me through COVID. Yeah, <laughs> there are certain things that you YouTube mm. is free. Um, Facts. You do if you consider getting a, a personal true. trainer, mm-hmm. it's an investment to learn how you can continue on this path true. for the rest of your life. True. Okay. Say, say, all right, I'm gonna get a trainer for three months. Your mindset at that time might be, all right, I need, I need to fit into this dress. The trainer is going to whip me into shape. Mm-hmm. I'm not a drill sergeant. For <laughs> you sure? You sure that's a final answer? I mean, <laughs> I'm not a magician either. I'm here to facilitate the work, that's right? True. And I'm going that's to ensure true. that you're getting it done properly. You're not injuring yourself. I'm going to give you the blueprint, okay. right? So you don't necessarily have to have a trainer forever. I mean, it's True. impractical. It yeah. probably was. I like you mentioned the fact that you're not a drill sergeant, but if you or anybody else you know has been drilled into ah. doing drills by Shanti, yeah. there may be a hotline you can yeah. call at some point yeah. or another. But right. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I do what needs to be done. Okay, we leave for that. Right. Right, fair enough, fair enough. Um, so there's always that other thing that the, the, the physical side of it on the mental side of it, but is there anything that you do outside of, you know, literally waking up and going to the gym, you know, that, that you feel helps that, that healthy feeling that you have or that allows you to live the lifestyle that you do know. So, you know, as I said in the, you know, the previous, hmm. well, um, I meditate every morning. Okay. So, mental health is very, very important to me. I couldn't you agree. Know, and, and I see my life change due, um, well, how much better now? 557 awesome. days. Oh. So people always ask me, like, why may I have, may I have, on my status of day, day one, day two. So 557 nice, days. Nice, nice. Every morning, meditate. Every morning. Nice. Like 20 to half an hour. Nice. Every morning. You know, like, people have affirmation, all mm-hmm. these things. Every morning. Nice. So, for me, even when I'm playing out at home, mm. have that, have that moment in 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 the bed. Mm. Some people sit up and meditate. Some people, like me, mm. I lay down because meditation is very Personal. easy, you know. It's very and it's very easy. Mm-hmm. So what you do is just being present in a, in any given moment. So even this conversation can be a form of meditation because we're completely present. I'm looking at you directly. Mm-hmm nothing else we're not thinking about anything you're not stressing about anything you know so 
that's how my morning start. It and then I don't eat in the morning. morning. I don't eat in the morning. Oh, you don't eat in the morning? Okay, cool. And that, that was my thing to so yeah, good yeah, yeah, What do you eat before you go to the gym? Most times, nothing. Why? 90% of the time. When you, I was talking to her probably like before we started this and she was like, this is, this was like 9 o'clock or 9.30 in the morning. She's like, I would normally be on my second meal by now. I'm like, what? Yes. Because <laughs> I have to have, I have to get in at least five meals a day. So it's volume eating, but here's why. The food that I'm eating, they're very calorie dense. Ah, okay. So, you know, you're probably eating some sweet potatoes, not a lot of calories. Mm. So if you want to ensure that you're hitting a certain goal by the end of the day, you have to split up the meals because you can't you can't sit on and eat 300 grams of chicken first and then someday so you have to switch it up you yeah. split it up in like one or two meals i have to start eating from 5 a.m 5 30. especially if a day if it's a day where i know i'm going to train mm. and currently i'm doing more powerlifting stuff yeah so, I'm so i have to start eating at that time and my last meal is probably like a little bit after eight yeah. okay. all right so there's also a big part of some people's routine is how they approach going to going to the gym or how they approach you know you're gonna have a hectic time or a hectic week ahead and you want to balance that with the gym how do you do that well um so i'm a person that practice something that's called semen retention okay so no semen retention is where you harness your sexual energy mm -hmm. so no harnessing your sexual energy is meaning like you don't have sex so you don't or if you do have sex you don't come as a man Mm -hmm. So, um, the longer you can hold that for mm -hmm. your energy, you have more energy because that's how our creative energy as man flows. Okay. So for a woman, a woman can always like, a woman always notice a woman after sex can get up, wash, cook, clean, look after a picnic then, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like scrub down a place, everything, and a man did a little. <laughs> Drop out the leaf, snow down your place, bragla killing lip. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, because we as men we lose energy that way. Okay. But a woman loses energy when she sees her cycle. So that's the, the you know the difference. Okay. So as a man we have to learn how to harness our um, sexual energy. No, I've so heard athletes say that. I've heard people that are like pro football players or marathon runners say where well, they just don't have sex prior to this engagement yeah. because they know that it somehow drains their yeah, energy yeah, yeah. but i i know that a lot of people have to balance that as yeah. well because you you don't want it to be a situation where for example you know you you are somebody that you know has a high sex drive and you're giving that up yeah. because you you want to have you know you want to hit some goals in the gym but then that affects other things like how does that how you, how you balance that so, how would you suggest that? um i so here what you do now as a man, what you can do is, all right, because you have your wife, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to satisfy your wife. So what you can do, if your wife understands, you can, but you just don't. You just don't. You don't finish. Okay. You go to the finish. Okay. Cool. Right? Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of time, um, people are, enough people are going to say, yo, but that's the aim. Not all the time. Okay. You see me? Okay. Because, um, so the the point of sexual intercourse in the first place is for the creation of right, a child procreate, yeah. right mm -hmm. so if at this moment you don't want to create a child what you can do as a man you can hold that energy instead of letting it out because right. as i said before mm -hmm. and the next thing with semen retention it, it helps with focus okay uh, and I mean, help you to focus more because you you somehow yeah, made it well because together. you know you go spend your time or you're gonna eat or you're gonna sleep or you think about the next woman say you know mm -hmm. so you know it helps with your focus all right cool i challenge very, anybody just try it and i think i guarantee just try it very different approach especially for a dj i would say um yeah. because a lot of people tend to look at it as you know, I, like I said, I've heard it before, but it's always pro athletes. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on the whole semen retention thing. Listen, <laughs> if you are going to try that method, mm. just ensure that it's worth it. Okay. Uh, cool. Ensure to each his own. Yeah, I mean everybody just has to ensure their own 
it's that it is what can you really want to put yourself in that position at the sake of what so think about your why why am i doing this okay, right, cool. it's fine to experiment mm -hmm. that's how you find out what works for you right so let's just make sure to it worth it and for some people it's kind of extreme in my opinion because yeah. bodybuilders especially uh, yeah. practices Do that, that right, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but it's kind of the same the same thing as all right fine i need to save a certain amount of money by a mm. certain amount of time so i'm going to do this mm -hmm. right i'm not gonna go out, i'm not gonna eat out so look at it from that, that perspective, perspective. Like, what are you doing it for okay cool okay. um i i was about to say that because everybody has a different experience so we're all built differently and there are some people that will tell you that they go to the gym and after going to the gym that is when their sex drive is the highest yeah, yeah. so i'm assuming that's, that that is for the, that for them must be like well. charger at that point in time like because they like we go to the gym we might go home have a cold shower we just go about our day some people just you know that is when their sex drive is at their highest they just have to get done and yeah, that yeah. is it so yeah. everybody has and their the, own like process. you mentioned women losing energy when they're menstruating mm. Why women, we only have like one good week out of the month. We're always going through <laughs> I, something. Why? Whether it's ovulation, PMS, you're on your cycle. But what is interesting is there are women who are actually strongest on probably like the second or third day of their cycle. Seriously? <laughs> yes, like facts. <laughs> so, especially because I have a lot of female clients, they tend to try and use that as, oh, feeling so dreamer. You'd never know what you are capable of. First day, I understand you're feeling cramped. You probably just want to roll over in there. By the second day, you'll be surprised of what you can do. And it's something that I've experienced myself. I said, no man, <laughs> what's going on? And I looked into it and I'm like, oh, no, you don't necessarily have to train around your cycle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's always things that you can do to switch things up and make it manageable when you're going through that. Because some women, some women are just like elite. And <laughs> some women are just, you know, you know they're trying. Yeah, they yeah, want yeah. to get them there. Sure. So, you know, to each his own. Okay. Um, how do you handle, well, first of all, do you have any male clients? I do okay. have male clients. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. <laughs> All right, so oh, that word. Let, let me. I think you kind of know where I'm going with this, but we'll go on with it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I just when I decided to start personal training, I said to myself, "I'm not gonna train nails." Really? When you've been in the fitness, we're deeply hurt. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm right in the off. Right cool. in off. So you know. When you've been in the fitness space for a while as a female, there are certain things that you experience, and there are certain things that you witness. And I was like, oh, I don't want to put myself in a position to ever be on the receiving end oh, of, of that. Okay. You know, whatever mm. happened. Mm. And so as time went on, and you know, you get a little bit more knowledge because as, as I said, like I'm always researching, I'm always reading. The difference between training men and women is really not that, it's not, not, not that big of a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anatomy is the same. Mm -hmm. The difference is mainly the hormones and the attitude. You know, as I mentioned before, there are males who are more receptive to other males. Okay. You don't necessarily, they don't necessarily want to listen to you as a female. Like they, they feel like for some reason, I gotta have all the certifications yeah, man, from A to Z. Mm. They feel like they don't know what you're talking about. And I'm the kind of person that will debate you. But when I when I notice that you're not receptive enough and you're not listening to me, mm. I'm like that's, that's it for it. me. That, that's and it. so it, it's easy for me now to figure out if you're serious or not. Because if you're coming to me on a professional level mm -hmm. and you're inquiring about training, mm -hmm. I will know based off the way you greet me and okay. based off the way you, you're inquiring about certain services. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna jump in my DM and be like, oh, I need to have a leg day with you. It's a no for me. <laughs> it's a the no approach. for me. <laughs> yeah. And so when you're looking to join a team, <laughs> when you're looking to join the team, there's like a vetting process for everybody. Okay. So we're going to talk mm. via whichever medium you decide to reach out to me. What's your and goal then we're going to have an in-person consultation. Mm -hmm. And if at the end of that, I realize that you, 
one, you probably don't need me, or two, you're not serious and you're here to waste my time mm -hmm. as a male. Mm. Okay. I nobody. I mean, I can't. I can't wrong you for any discrimination that you'd want to put in for males and females. Because I feel like even if a woman comes here, she doesn't necessarily know what she wants. Then you would have probably more work with her to, to get that done. Ah, exactly. So and I always think. I always wonder about that because I mean, there are women that go to the same gym as me that are trainers and they are fit. Like mm -hmm. they are fit. They are strong. They they could eat, and, I, and they have male clients as well. But I always. Because this is somebody that, you know, has to talk to you at late hours of the night, early morning, and they have to instruct you. I was wondering how that dynamic works with female trainers because you have to assert yourself and then not be disrespectful. And then there's boundaries. so many double standards here. The boundaries must be boundaries very difficult. Boundaries are very important. Thankfully, with the males that I've worked with, I haven't had any experience that made me feel uncomfortable because, as I said, like, we're going to have the conversation mm -hmm. in the initial stages and we are here to work mm -hmm. like there are you know instances where the male will be like all right i'm not facing to you and, you know but as a personal trainer mm -hmm. i'm gonna make you pay for that <laughs> right <laughs> you're going to pay for not listening to me because i agree that's what i'm here for exactly. i'm here to help you so mm -hmm. let's get the work done mm -hmm. let's not do any you know, yeah, no, no, like that, it's a professional relationship. Exactly. It's just like you having a, a female boss or a female mm -hmm. manager. So. Forty minutes. Uh, cool. No problem. Um, and uh, so the dynamic that I I, I was trying to, to kind of bring out at the time was if you you as an attractive trainer. I've had an issue before with you know men that are trying to you know make it more than about the the yeah. gym type of situation. How do you just navigate? Over? Is it just you know you just have to okay no longer doing this or you find a way to still manage it and let them understand or you'd rather just cut it off? Well, I haven't had that experience with any males that I've trained. Like it, there hasn't been a situation where I had to discontinue training with a male but as a female in the gym mm. you know people are going to approach you mm -hmm. men are gonna approach you mm. but you have you have to firm and strong <laughs> you know, in a days like somebody comes to you with any kind of inappropriate conversation mm. or argument Listen, I don't have Shut time for down. this. Yeah, like down. let us move on. Mm. Women are so timid in the gym. They're they're so intimidated by mm. like the presence of male. Mm. Like there are women who will show up and a man says something about them and they don't come back. They don't come back to the gym yeah. simply because of that. So males you need to do better. And secondly, <laughs> women hold your ground because you are paying a membership just like everybody else. Everybody else. You have a right to use the space just like everybody else. But I haven't had any, you know, thankfully any situation inside that where I had to stop working with somebody because of that because I'm a serious woman. Okay, good. And, <laughs> and as, as it should be, to be very honest, yeah. because you take your thing very seriously, so you should demand a certain yeah. level of respect. Exactly. I, there's a, a point in conversation, so we, in, in usually in, in these conversations, we kind of throw it out to some people and get their feedback. And one of the things was that, that a friend of mine, a female friend of mine asked was that, Jamaican yeah. men tend to have this dynamic like, okay, they want a woman who's shaped like this and look like mm. this and belly flat and then they can look like whatever they want like mm. <laughs> type of thing so mm. we, we we always want to like get a woman's perspective on these things as well because you know jamaican man want a certain type of woman that's a certain type of way sure. but then they we don't feel like we're held to the same standard so i don't when people say to me say oh so why you bother go to the gym cut you have two people already are you married it's almost as if like someone is supposed to care how me still look and feel after that how does that go for you know have you have you encountered that scenario already where somebody that is you know let me say no men like a man that doesn't think that he needs to maintain a certain level of fitness because you know he has money or whatever the case is. <laughs> um, I mean, I will agree with you. It's very, very common for, you know, female to take the physical aspect of, you know, their life very serious, more serious than the male. Hmm. But here's what I want males to understand. 
even though the physical aspect is important, think about training for your life. When you approach, when you're approaching 40, 50, 60, and you are, let me say, on the heavier side, or um, the effects of that starts to weigh on your bones, that you can't run behind your child, you can't pick up the child, you can't bring the groceries in two trips. So even though you feel like, all right, I'm the man, I have money, I have this and I have that, and I can attract a female, for yourself, if you are starting out, I will. I, I would encourage you to think about it that way. No, I'm not there. Okay. Right, because the women are going to be there. <laughs> the women are going to be there. You know, <laughs> someone I need to do. The women are gonna be there. Yeah. But what about you? Mm. What about your health? What about you being there for your family and just being a better version of yourself? Agreed. Agreed. Mm. I mean, that's that's one big motivator for me. That. To be frank with you, I intend to watch my kids grow up. And, ah. and that's one of the things that I, and I want to be able to, you know, still do things and still run behind them and still have a very active role in their life. And right. I mean, be, I'm not saying, but I, I'll say this in the camera, it's not that we're saying that going to the gym or exercising guarantees you be able to do this and have a longer life, but it just it makes the chances Make far it better. So Make it do, do, find a way to do it in some way, shape or form. What's that as well? Yo, no, like, cause, yeah, right, so that, that's another other thing that I want to touch on because a lot of people will will say that they've given up, you know, having a healthier lifestyle simply because you know they were so ingrained in, in working and doing exactly what they want. But then I've seen people personally that have millions and millions of dollars, they have a lot of money in the bank, and they spend a lot of it back on health and medical bills and that type of thing. So. You, you kind of have to look at it and say oh, there has to be some balance you you can't factor in you know making an additional let us say how much million today yeah. in addition to spending it back in in just health and medical data yeah. down I that's wanna look, why i say train for your life yeah man, yeah, man I train agree. to agree. work out to live your life as easy as you possibly can, yeah, man, yeah, man, right. can. Yeah, right? man, yeah. and that's one of the things that why, why i look at fit people and i already have like a different respect for them because you can't buy that like mm. you know, you know some people will say, oh, you know, you could you could do your little BBL or you could do what you want to do with, with the money. I'm back in the gym now. <laughs> and they because try to do the cards and it. You have to maintain right. it, right? But then you see somebody that, yo, that, like you can look at, and fit people do this all the time. They look at other fit people and go, I'm a person that fit, man. Mm -hmm. And they, that, I already have that respect for them because you know they probably gave up some amount of time or they wake up early in the morning yeah. or they do it late sacrifice. at night. So the sacrifice is where the respect comes from because you know that that is easily the hardest part of it. That is the part that required a lot to begin with mm -hmm. and and especially me you know anytime i see somebody coming into the gym and you can tell it's like them first day and them very heavy set and them out of shape i have respect for those people too That's because sure. them people eh, you know it take a lot to show up it take a lot to go against whatever people are saying and whatever habits you have and all of those kind of mm -hmm. things show up and they show up consistently yeah. so big up admirable, to those people admirable. Definitely. How hard or easy is it navigating in a space that's dominated by men? Meaning, like, you will lift heavy. Like, you will, I don't know if you, you, are you looking to go into bodybuilding at any point in time or anything like that? Mm, I do not see myself competing in bodybuilding. No. Okay. Right. I'm more of a, a strength girl. I'm okay. more of a powerlifting girl. Okay, good. But, yeah. and from what I've seen, there are more. There are more male trainers than there are female trainers. Absolutely. So, in terms of how do you navigate that space? Like when you when you're not only getting certified, but then you're in a setting with other trainers, do you find that it is you know easier for you to navigate it, or it is harder because of the, what you have to do to gain respect? Um, I feel like the reason it's probably not as hard for me is because I'm very confident in the service that I offer. Okay to the people I am working with. The respect comes when other trainers see that your clients are achieving what they set in, uh, okay. what they come in cool. to, to achieve. And so that's when they start to recommend you and that's when they will come over and hear the ratings and stuff and, mm. and move on. But it's definitely male dominated and you have to hold your ground. You really have to hold your ground in the gym as a female because listen to the tone of my voice. Can you imagine me walking up to a male trainer and say, hey, like, I need that barbell when you feel 
They pe- sometimes they barely even like, <laughs> hear me and feel like raise your voice a little bit. You have to be a little bit more assertive mm-hmm. to let them know that hey, I'm here to take us take up as much space as, I as you can. are taking up. Okay. I'm not I'm not intimidated by one bit because I have a solid team of people mm-hmm. and they know what they're there to do. That's cool. And so I have respect for a lot of the male trainers. I learn a lot from them. Mm. It's just a situation where you need to learn time and place. Mm. Okay. I understand like time and place is very important. Like if you see me working and moving around the gym, like as a man, now is not the time. <laughs> no, shoot, the shoot time. your shot a little later. Yeah, not, e- not even so much as, as that, like shooting your shots or whatever. Like. If I'm setting up for a client and you need something, so you you know you realize that I'm using, you have to be like, please be respectful about it because I try to do that as well. Like when you're sharing a space and everybody trying to get something done, I try to be as respect respectful as possible. How many sets you have left? Can you call me when you finish? You know, you start to form like a little family in a sense, especially when you're in one gym space, and so. It's gotten a bit easy for me to navigate now. Now, as people that have been seasoned and going to the gym for a minute, like, what is your goal? Like, what what is your ideal weight goal? What's your ideal body goal? Or is there somebody that you kind of look at and it's like, yo, I need my body to look like him or her mm-hmm. at this point in time? For me, I feel like that's always going to change, okay. especially because I'm interested in learning so many things. Okay. Um, last year, I was doing more bodybuilding stuff, more hypertrophy stuff, more muscle building um, stuff. And now I'm actually doing powerlifting, so there's not a lot of emphasis on muscle growth. It's purely like strength. As I mentioned before, my physique is a bit different now, but the strength is there. So I'm always going to be dibble and doubling in little things. things. Like, okay. You soon see me do yoga. You soon see me do, you know, and so I, I I'm, always, I'm probably going to always look different and I have to be like at peace okay. with that because I'm cool. trying to learn so I can't really like just kill up myself about the appearance all the time. I like that because at the end of the day you'll be able to advise different people on what to do in different settings as go. well so that's cool. Yeah, I, I, like, I like yeah. that. Okay, so what is the ideal physique now? Because I, I know I know Jigga that's bolt and yeah, ripped yeah. and I, I don't yeah, know which yeah. one of the Jiggas no I'm going to see in another two months. I know sure. <laughs> Um, to be honest, um, I kind of figure out where I want to be, you know, um, I try the abs thing, <laughs> too slim, um, you know, more and be a little bit, you know, more husky. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, um, no, I'm 207. Nice. So I try go 220, then come back down to 207 or 205. Okay. Okay. So um, that's the ball can yeah, yeah. Lead. So okay. you got. So I might go maybe 220, 225. Mm. So people will see me look a little bit bigger and then come back <laughs> down slowly. Okay. But um, you know, maintaining muscle mass is very hard. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And it's very hard. yeah, guys. Now that we're two fit people here, we have two fit people here. We're gonna do a little push-up challenge and <laughs> see who win. So we can check it out and see how it ended, alright? I'm sure the results will shock you. Nah, I'm not lying. Alright guys, so we just had a little push-up challenge between Jigga versus Shanti. I'm very, very interested to see you one and I know you are too, so let's check it out. Alright. How much are you guys going to? 15, 16, <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, my son, yes, all right, cool. I'm going to beat him. <laughs> all right, well, yo, appreciate it, tonight, guys. Thank you, thank you. I definitely appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, cheers. Cheers, yeah. here with you. But cheers, more water. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll talk soon. Huh? Yeah. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, oh. Nah, man, I lie. Oh. So you get, so you I win. I mean, winning, you know. 
Who will win? You win? I'm sure. I'm sure. Alright, so. May I give you winning? If you say you win, I give you. The fact that I go up against is a win. Look at that. Ah, ah, ah. Don't take that one. Make sure you enjoy yourself.